Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create the popular Marigold look in Luminar Neo and save it as a preset so you can use it on other images in the future. This effect builds on the yellow color in the image and it offers an excellent fresh look which is ideal for the upcoming spring season. To make this look work, you will need a photo with a subject with a fair amount of yellow in it. Now, if you want to learn how to create this look, make sure that you download the sample files for this tutorial by following the link in the description of this video. When you're ready, import them into Luminar Neo and we can start. But before we're going to do that, I want to quickly remind you that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Spring Bundle. This new bundle is part of our four season series and it offers over 900 spring team assets for your favorite Luminar tools. Follow the link in the description to access brand new presets, skies, overlays, LUTs, textures, frames, backgrounds and much more. To get the best possible price, simply visit our website at cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Spring. Okay, so once you have the images ready, we can start. Let's select the image with the lady with the flower and then move it into edit module by hitting E on your keyboard or clicking on edit on the top of your screen. Here in the edit module, we're gonna start by the basic development. For this, we need to go into the main toolbar, essentials section and develop tool. In the develop tool, we're going to do just the very basic what we need to do. Thinking about creating this look and being able to apply it in the future on other images. So the first thing, open the optics and make sure that the auto defringe is selected. After that, close this and we're going to move on sharpness and noise reduction. First come first with the noise reduction, the standard number is 20. So just select 20 on the luminosity slider and we are done here. After that, moving on to sharpness, the actual standard amount for sharpness is 40. That's a good number to start with. And after that, we also need to adjust the masking just to make sure that we only sharpening the areas with the edges, details and texture. So adjust the masking slider up to 70 or 75. Now we are done with the sharpness, noise reduction and optics, and we can go into the light and black and whites. Once again, very gently here, we're not gonna adjust exposure. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add some nice contrast and I really want a strong contrast here. So let's go somewhere around 50 or even 55. After that, gently with the highlights, usually with the highlights, we like to bring them down. In this case, just around minus 25. And let's open the shadows a little bit. Again, just sticking to somewhere around 20. With the black and whites, I don't want to add any more whites, just a little bit of extra contrast with the blacks. So let's go to minus 10. Once we are done here, we can close the blacks and whites, light, and we are done with the basic development. I don't want to work or do anything with the color section. We're not going to adjust the white balance or saturation or vibrance. All you need to do, I already showed you. So once we finish, just close the develop tool and apply it to the image. 
If you need to adjust it later on, make sure that you click on edits on the top of the main toolbar and you can do further adjustments here. For now, let's go back to the tools and we're gonna move on with the edits. For this image, I would like to add a little bit of extra clarity and to do that, we're gonna go into the Structure AI tool. Click on it to open it and usually I like to stick to somewhere around 10 to 20. So let's go to plus 15. Don't forget that the Structure AI is human aware tool. So when you are adding clarity with the Structure AI tool, you only applying it to anything other than the human. Now close it and we can continue. Next thing I would like to do is to add some extra details. For this, we're going to be using the details tool. Again, click on it to open it. And I kind of like to work with the small and medium details. Usually with the small details, I like to go somewhere around 10. And with the medium details, anything between 5 to 10 as well. With the large details, sometimes it's just a bit too strong. So small details and medium details is where I go. So now we took care about the clarity and details using the Structure AI and Details tool. After this, we're looking for a little bit of gentle glow. Of course that we could use the glow tool. However, to add a little bit of extra magical feel, I always like to use the mystical tool. You can find it just above the glow tool. Click on it to open it and let's just increase the amount to the amount we like. Maybe it's like 20 is looking quite good. Once we finish here, we can close this and now we can finally move to the part where we're going to create the marigold look. As you probably guessed it, for this we're going to be using the HSL panel. To find it, we need to go back to the top of our main toolbar. Again, essential section and open the color tool. If you're not comfortable about using the HSL panel, make sure you check out our color tool tutorial, which is available on our YouTube channel. Let's click on the HSL, open it, and we're going to start from here. Now, when you click on the gray drop down box, you will see that there is a hue, saturation, and luminance. And you can basically adjust three of these for individual colors for red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple, and magenta. Let's start with the hue. So once again, make sure that it's selected and we're gonna start by adjusting the yellow. We actually want the yellow to be more on the green side. So we're gonna go somewhere around 20 to 30, right here. Let me show you the before and after. And you can see that the orange yellow is looking a little bit more like yellow. After this, we're going to go into the green where we're going to do the opposite. We want our green to look more like yellow. So we're going to go in a minus again, somewhere around 30 or maybe even 35. To continue with the cyan, we want to actually take the cyan and bring it up to somewhere around 25. And to finish it off, looking at the jacket and the glasses, I would like the blue to be a little bit more like cyan. So take the blue slider and bring it down until you start to see the cyan coming out from the jacket and the glasses. For me, I think somewhere around 50 or maybe minus 50, minus 45 is looking good. Once again, it's good throughout the process to keep using the before and after to really see the effect you're creating. For now, we don't need to adjust the purple and magenta and we can move to saturation. So click on a drop down box, select the saturation and we're going to continue here. The idea is that we're going to let our warm colors like red, orange, yellow stand out, mostly the yellow, but red and orange too. And everything else, we're going to just bring it down. We're going to make it less saturated. So starting with the red and orange, as I mentioned, we're going to actually bring them down. Maybe starting with the red, let's have a look somewhere around minus 20. And similarly with the orange, we're going to bring it down. However, I want you to keep an eye on the skin tones, making sure that we don't completely remove them. So I just think minus 20, minus 21 is looking good. With the yellow, we want to be careful here, but to make it a little washed out, we can just go to minus 10. After this, we're going to go much stronger. With the green, let's go somewhere around minus 60. Similarly with the cyan, similarly with the blue and continue on with the purple and magenta. Once we're done, once again, it's always good to double check the before and after, and you are starting to see the look we are creating. 
When you finish with the saturation, we can move to the last part, and that's the luminance. That's where we're going to be adjusting the luminance or brightness of the individual colors. So we want our red to be a little bit stronger. Same for the orange, maybe even stronger here, 20 and maybe 20 on a yellow too. And after that, again, we're going to bring the colors down. So with our green, we're going to go to, again, minus 50. With the cyan to minus 50. And with the blue, we don't want to go that low. So maybe just around minus 20. And purple also minus 20. And to finish it off with the magenta, let's go to minus 10. As always, let's have a look at the before and after, and we are really starting to get the look I like. Now looking at it, I think the blue is maybe a little bit too dark, so let's make the blue a little bit brighter. Let's go somewhere around minus 10. And again, let's go back to saturation, and let's just bring the blue up a little bit to somewhere around minus 40. One more time, before and after, and we are almost finished. However, to finish the look, we're going to close the color tool and we're going to move into the portrait section. In the portrait section, we're going to use the high key tool. Click on it to open it and here start by increasing the amount. Don't go too far, just somewhere around 20 is good and that will really finish the overall look of the marigold where we have really strong yellow color mixed with nice skin tones and everything else is nicely washed out and unsaturated. Let's have a look at the before and after and I think it's looking great. Now since we finished with this, what we can do now, we can save this as a preset. To do this, we can go into the actions at the bottom of your toolbar, then click on save as preset. This will bring us into the presets module and it will open the my presets library. That's where all your presets are going to go. Here we can call this preset Marigold. And let's just call it new because I already have one. Once we finish, we can just hit enter and the preset is ready to be used. Now let's go back into the catalog module where we can select the second image. After this, we can bring it into the presets. Again, make sure that you are in my presets. If you're not, you can see it here in the list click on it and then just hover over the new preset we created and click on it. It will take a few seconds and it will apply to the image and the look is ready. Let's have a look at the before and after. And I think it's great. Now, if you're looking for more Marigold presets, once again, you can find them in our spring bundle. And if you want to see example of them, we can go into the purchased and here go into the Marigold look. And as you can see, we have 10 other similar looks that you can apply to your images. Now with the new function, you can just hover over the image and see what they're going to do to your image. Once you're happy with the result, you can just click on it and then move it into edit module where you can go ahead, move into the edits and adjust it based on the look you are looking for. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.